Deuteronomy chapter 5. Alawa. And Moshe called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the commandments and the judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that you may learn them, guard them, and do them. Awah made a covenant with us in Korah. Hurrah, Awah made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us who are all here alive this day. Hawa talked with you face to face in the mountain out of the midst of the fire, saying, I am Hawa, which brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down yourself unto them nor serve them. For I, Hawa, am a jealous power, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and guard my commandments. You shall not take the name of Hawa in vain, which means to swear falsely by the name of Hawa. We do not say in the name of Hawa to do anything other than what Hawa has commanded. Don't take Hawa's name in vain. For Hawa would not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Guard the day of the Holy Shabbat. And as Hawa has commanded you, six days shall you labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of Hawa. In it you shall not do any work. You nor your son nor your daughter nor your manservant nor maidservant nor ox nor ass nor any of your cattle nor your stranger that is within your gates that your manservant and maidservant may rest may rest as well as you and remember that you were a servant in the land of Mitzrayim and that Hawa brought you out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore, Hawa commanded you to observe the day of Shabbat, honor your father and your mother. Hawa. As Hawa has commanded you that your days be prolonged and that it go well with you in the land which Hawa gives you. You shall not kill. Neither shall you break wedlock. Neither shall you steal. Neither shall you bear false witness against your brother, your sister, your neighbor. Neither shall you desire your neighbor's woman. Neither shall you covet your neighbor's house, his field, manservant, maidservant, his ox, his ass, or anything that is your neighbor's. These words Hawa spoke unto all your assembly in the mountain, out of the midst of the fire of the cloud. And of the thick darkness with a great voice, and he added no more, and he wrote them on two sapphire stones and delivered them unto me. And it came to pass when you heard the voice of the mist of the darkness for the mountain did burn with fire. I stood between Hawa and you at that time to show you the word of Hawa for you were afraid by reason of the fire.
that you came near unto me. Even all the heads of your tribes and your elders, and you said, Behold, Hawah has showed us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day, Hawah talks with man and lives, and now therefore why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of Hawaii anymore, then we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living Elohim speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived? Go near and hear all that Hawa shall say and speak unto us. All that Hawa shall speak unto you and we will hear it. And do it. And Hawa heard the voice of your words when you spoke unto me. And Hawa said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people which they have spoken unto you. They have well said all they have spoken. Oh, that there were such a heart in them that they would respect me, obey me. And guard all the commandments, saying always that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Go say to them, get you into your tents again. But as for you, stand here by me and I will speak unto you all the commandments, the statutes, judgments, which you shall teach them that they may do them in the land, the land which I give them to possess. You shall guard to do, therefore, as Hawaii has commanded you, you shall not turn aside to the right or to the left. No hijacks allowed, no detours allowed. You shall walk in all the ways which Hawaii has commanded you, that you may live and that it may be well with you and that you may prolong your days in the land, Managa, the land which you shall possess. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, the judgments, which Hawa commanded to teach you that you might do them in the land, whether you go to possess, that you might respect Hawa to obey, to guard all the statutes and commandments, which I command you, you and your sons and your sons' sons all the days of your life and that your days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and guard to do it, that it may be well with you and that you may increase mightily as a while your fathers has promised you in the land that flows with milk and with honey. Hear, O Israel, Hawa, Hawa is one, and you shall love Hawa with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children. Diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house. When do you talk about the law of Hawaii? If not the Shabbat. If you're busy every other day, you finally get some time to rest. And actually have great conversations about Hawaii. Diligently teaching unto your children. Verse 8. Chapter 6, Deuteronomy. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them upon the post of your house and on your gates, and it shall be when Hawa shall have brought you into the land which he swore unto your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to give you great and goodly cities which you built not, And houses full of all good things which you filled not. 
and wells, primary water. Yo, Seth, pop it off. Get in that classroom. Wells, Doug, which you dug not. They tapping in to the primary mill. Vineyards and olive trees, which you planted not, when you shall have eaten and be full. It's already there for you, my knock. Then beware, lest you forget Hawa, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You shall obey Hawa and serve him and shall swear by his name, not swear falsely, not say Hawa said we must, you know, go through this hijack, go through this detour, go to the left or to the right. Hawa said no. But we qualm in the name of Hawa. In the name of Hawa, we qualm. That's swearing. That's swearing by the name of our Creator only. We qualm in the name of Hawa. We rise in the name of Hawa. We gather in the name of Hawa. We don't swear by any other deity. We don't mention no other deities in our. Oh, we're gonna pray in the name of any other name? No. Are we giving honor to this name, that name? No. <laughs> We only praise in Hawa diligently. We ain't turning to the left or to the right. This is Drop Nation. And you got the water. And the fire keeps burning. You shall swear by his name, Hawa. You shall not go after other Elohim, the other Elohim of the people which are around about you. If you're calling on the same God as them, that's a problem, my nigga. If they're calling God, God, and you're calling God, God, that's a problem. If they're calling on Yeshua, Jesus, Yahweh Shai, and you're calling on Yeshua, Jesus, Yahweh Shai, that's a problem. They're not calling on Hawa. Only we are calling on Hawa. Hijack free. Breath of security. The fifth and the sixth letter. Picto Paleo Hebrew. Hawa. Don't go after other gods, my Nagas. Don't go after the gods which are around about you, my Nagas. Verse 15. Hawa's a jealous God. A jealous power, a jealous L, lest the anger of Hawa be kindled against you and destroyed you from off the face of the earth. You shall not tempt Hawa as you tempted him in Makkah. You shall diligently guard the commandments of Hawa and his testimonies and his statutes that he commanded you. And you shall do that which is right. We keep telling our people, do the right thing. Spike Lee told you, do the right thing, my noggin. Hawaii's telling you, Deuteronomy 6, verse 16. Diligently guard the commandments, verse 17. Which he has commanded you. And you shall do which is right in the good in the sight of Hawa. Do the right thing, my naga. Always do the right thing. That it might be well with you that you may go in and possess in the good land which Hawa swore, swore unto your fathers to cast out all your enemies from before you. And Hawa has spoken. And when your son asks you in the time to come, saying, What mean these testimonies, statutes, and judgments? What does this mean? Papa, what does this mean? Mama, what does this mean? Then you shall say unto your son or your daughter, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Mitzrayim. We were slaves in America. Captives, prisoners of war. And Hawa brought us out of bondage with a mighty hand. And Hawa showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, Mitzrayim, bondage, America, whatever you want to call it, upon Pharaoh, upon all the household before his eyes. And he brought us out from thence that he might bring us in to give us the land. 
which he swore to our fathers. And Hawa commanded us to do all these statutes to obey Hawa for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we guard. It's all about guarding. You are knights. Knights are guarding what? These commandments before Hawa as he has commanded us. When Hawa shall bring you into the land, whether you go to possess it and has cast out many nations before you. The Kittim, Hittim, Girgashim, Imarim, the Canaanim, Canaanite, Perizim, Kivirim, Yuvukim, Yuvukim, and seven nations greater and mightier than you. And when Hawa shall deliver them before you, you shall smite them and utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant, no covenant with them. Nor show mercy unto them. Neither shall you make marriages with them. Your daughters you should, not, you should not give unto his sons, nor his daughters shall you take unto your sons. What is it about? Is it about physically mixing with other races, nationalities, or tribes? Or is it about your soul? Is it about your heart? Your mind being hijacked? See, back then and even right now, you mix in. Right now, we don't know who's who. So it's not about black and white. Oh, I got a black girl. Well, that black girl could be Moab. That black girl could be Amon. That black girl could be the Jebusite. That black girl could be Edom. That black girl could be Israel. Because <laughs> these are all black tribes. So that's not, that's a two dimensional way of thinking. It comes with energy, frequency, and vibration. And the issue was to maintain your energy, frequency, and vibration. Because you can mix in with a blonde hair, blue eye, whatever. And in a few generations, it's as if it never happened because <laughs> Israel got dominant genetics. You could tune somebody up left and right. So it wasn't about physically so much physically because you can always come back home. Israel can always intermix with Israel and be 100 percent Israel after, you know, a certain period of, of generations. Right. But once a Naga got his heart hijacked unto another guy. Once you accept another power and you start teaching hijack to your children, or at least not diligently teaching your children to listen to Hawa directly. Once you stop diligently hearkening and listening, my naga, you might be lost forever. You might be lost forever. You think Hawa is more concerned about your physical mixture or your actual Ruach that you're giving away to other Elohim, other power. Neither shall you make marriages with them. Your daughters you should not give unto his son, nor his son shall you take unto daughters shall you take unto his sons, for they will turn away your son from following me. That's the issue, my naga. That's the problem with mixing with other tribes. And again, we think black, white, oh, don't black people shouldn't mix with white people. None of that exists. What other white people? What tribe are they? What tribe are these white people? What indigenous land do these so-called white people come from? I'll wait. So all these tribes were melanated that we're talking about here. So it wasn't black or white. It was energy, frequency, and vibration. You could be with someone that you think is a sister or a brother today that really has the energy of the Moabite or the Jebusite or the Amalekite and get you into their other energy, right? Slide their other energy hijack you, you know what I'm saying? Disconnect you from your creator, make you think it don't matter. Now you know, you're no longer diligently, what's it say in chapter six, verse six? 
And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. It's no longer in your heart. Verse 7, and you shall teach them diligently unto your children. The issue with mixing with these other nations, these other tribes, was that no longer would you have a diligent connection. Verse 16. You shall not tempt Hawah as you tempted him in Makkah. You shall diligently guard the commandments of Hawah. Once you're no longer diligently, diligently, look up the word diligently. Once you no longer have a diligent intention of guarding the commandments, the realities of your ama, your abba, your frame, and your shape, or your mother, your father, once it's no longer diligent, Banagi, you set yourself up to be lost forever. And the issue with giving your daughter unto another nation or 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 taking a daughter, you know, into your nation or whatever the case is. For they will turn away your son from following me. These women, <laughs> it don't matter what what level of melanin they got or not got. If they're not focused, oh boy, my bro, watch out. If they ain't focused, watch out, right? If she coming hijack free, hey, halal hawa. <laughs> Allow why, but you already know that we at war against ourselves, man. And now it's like you can have a woman of Judah or a man of Judah, and they're still going to try to hijack you and bring you some some Jesus, some Muhammad, some something, or just you know teach you not to give a shit about your creator, you know, man or woman, you know, sister or brother. So we flow off the vibration. We flow off the vibration only. And that is Hawa. Let's get it for the dismount. Allow Hawa. Praise our creator. For they will turn away your son from following me that they may serve other Elohim. So will the anger of Hawa be kindled against you, I'm trying to save y'all because I don't want the anger for a while to be kindled for going after other gods, other powers. It's all happening. But thus shall you deal with them. You shall destroy their altars, break down their images, cut down their Asherah poles. No more Christmas trees. And burn their graven images with fire. For you are a holy people unto Hawa. Hawa has chosen you to be a special people unto himself above all people. The same racism, but you have been set tribally above all people. Because remember back in chapter 5, verse 23, Hawa gathers all the heads of the tribes. All the heads of the tribes and your elders and your elders. So this is tribal. This is family. A wise tribal gathering the tribes. For you are a holy people. You are set apart, my Nagas. You have been chosen. You are a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Hawa did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people for you were the fewest of all people. But because Hawa loved you and because he would guard the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers. Hawa guards the oath. Do you guard the oath? Because it takes two to connect, my nag. You got to guard the oath. 
Has Hawah brought you out of the out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim? Know therefore that Hawah, he is your power, the faithful power, which guards his covenant and mercy with them that love him and guard his commandments to do a, to a thousand generations and repays them that hate him to their face, to their face bone, to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hates him. He will repay him to his face. You shall therefore guard the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments, which I command you this day to do them. Wherefore, it shall come to pass, if you if you listen, my, my children, if you listen to these judgments and guard and do them, children of Israel, that Hawa shall guard unto you the covenant, the mercy which he swore unto your fathers. You want the covenant? You want to be the head? You tired of being the tail? Hawa will guard the covenant that he swore. Will you listen though? Will, will, will you hearken? Will you listen? Will you hear? And he will love you and he will bless you and he will multiply you and he will bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land, your grain, your wine, your oil, the increase of your kind. And the flocks of your sheep and the land which he swore unto your fathers to give you, you shall be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or your cattle. And Hawah will take away from you all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of, Miss, of Miss Ryan, which you know, upon you, but will lay them upon all them that hate you. And you shall consume all the people which Hawah shall deliver you. Your eyes shall have no pity upon them. Neither shall you serve their gods, for that would be a snare unto you. If you shall say in your heart, these nations are more than I. How can I dis dispossess them? You looking around at this government, at this at this captivity, you're like, how in the world can we possibly how can we possibly get our stuff back, man? How can we possibly zine up? How can we possibly rise up? They're they're too great, they're too powerful, they're too technological they they see all things they hear all things they got us afraid my naga we live in fear everywhere we walk everywhere we drive everywhere we go we in fear we sleep in fear we wake up in fear all we know is fear because they rule by fear aren't you tired of being afraid aren't you tired of being scared my naga As the people were scared to death of our oppressor. If you say in your heart, verse 17, chapter 7, Deuteronomy, if you say in your heart, these nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? You shall not be afraid of them, but shall well remember what Hawah did unto Pharaoh. Do you remember the miracles of Hawah? the greatness, the magnitude of Hawa. You have nothing to fear from anything the hijack is brewing up in their laboratories. You have nothing to fear. The great temptations which you saw, your eyes saw, the signs, the wonders, the mighty hand, and the stretched out arm, whereby Hawa brought you out so shall Hawah do unto all the people of whom you are afraid. Moreover, Hawah will send the hornet against them until they, until they that are left and hide themselves from you be destroyed. You shall not be frightened, my naga, for Hawah is among you a mighty power and terrible. And Hawa will put out those nations little by little. You must not consume them all at once. 
lest the beast of the field increase upon you. The beast gonna need the beast gonna need something to eat now. I mean, you know, leave the beast a little something. But Hawah shall deliver them unto you, and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction until they be destroyed. And he shall deliver their kings into your hand, and you shall destroy their name from under heaven. Oh man, the ice, the ice is singing, y'all. The ice is singing. There shall be no man able to stand before you, my naga, until you have destroyed them, my naga. The graven images of their gods shall you burn with fire, uh-oh. And you shall not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto you, lest you be snared therein, for it is an abomination to Hawaii. Neither shall you bring an abomination into your house, lest you be cursed like it. But you shall utterly detest it, and you shall utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. All the commandments which I command you this day, you shall guard to do. That you may live, my naga, and multiply, and go in and possess the land, man. Let's go. Let's get there. Quam. Possess the land which Hawah swore to our fathers. And you shall remember all the way which Hawah led you these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you. We're so powerful. Sometimes we need to sit down. Just, just like your children. You know, they're so strong. They're so dedicated. They're so, you know what I mean? I mean, kids or children are filled with such perseverance, man, such goal oriented perseverance. But if their intentions are off, they might need to sit down no matter how powerful they are because they're giving the wrong energy to the wrong thing at the wrong time. They're giving the wrong energy to the wrong thing at the wrong time. And it's all vanity. It's all for nothing. So we needed to sit down. We had to go through all this jamma to this day. Hawaii is bringing us through all this friction and static and jamma to this day. We're fighting for everything. This is my fourth time recording this, man. I had crashes, computer issues. Everybody's going through jam ups. Why does Hawa bring us through all this fire, man? Why do we have to have this struggle every doggone day? I feel you, man. I feel you, Drop Nation. Why or why are we going through the jam up, man? Listen up. And you shall remember all the way which Hawa led you these 40 years in the wilderness to do what? To humble you. And to prove you, you got to be proven, my knock. You got to prove it to yourself who you are. You got to prove it to you, my knock. To know what was in your heart. What's in your heart? Why does Hawaii need to know what's in your heart, bone? Whether you would guard his commandments or not. When you have nothing, when you have no gold or silver, when you have no land, when your family's scattered, when you're, when you're not educated, when you're the tail, not the head, when you're famished, when you're poisoned every day, will you keep the commandments? Will you keep the commandments of Hawaii with nothing? After you've been humbled, after you've been proved, What's in your heart after you've been humble? What's in your heart, my naga, my sister, my brother, Aquas, Akis? What's in your heart after you've been proven? After you've been humble? Will you keep the commandments? 
It's easy to keep the commandments when it's going all good for you. But will you keep the commandments right now? Rule number one. Let's try rule number one. Let's do it together. Don't put no God before or beside Hawa. Don't pray in the name of another God. Don't visualize another God. Don't try to make Christ God. Don't try to make Yahweh Shai the son of God. Therefore, he's God. Don't do none of this, man. Call on the creator only. And watch the water flow. You've been proven. You've been humbled. Hawa knows in your, what's in your heart. Hawa knows whether you will guard his commandments or not. And he humbled you and suffered you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you knew not. Neither did your fathers know about that manna. That Leviathan, let's go. That he might make you know that man does not live by blood or by bread only. Man does not live by bread only. But by every word that proceeds out the mouth of Hawa. Man does not live by bread only, but by every word, vibration, energy, frequency, the sound, the song that proceeds out the mouth of Hawa. Man lives. Allah Hawa. The water for joining me, nine above. The water for flowing every day with the brothers and sisters that are driving up across the plain. Bringing the frequency, that's all. Bringing the frequency. We ain't trying to prove nothing but the energy, the frequency, and the vibration that flows through us. And the water is singing. The ice is sinking. The ice is singing. And we're just surfing away. The ice is singing. Mama is singing. 